In this chapter of the Agents SDK course, we are going to be taking a look at tools. Now, for tools in Agents SDK, there are various ways that we can use them. First, we have pre-built tools. So there is a small number of these pre-built tools that come with Agents SDK. They are OpenAI built and they allow us to do a few interesting things. Then there are, of course, custom tools so we can define our own tools and use those as well so in this chapter we'll work through those and take a look at how we use tools and how we can best use tools in agents sdk so for this notebook i would recommend actually you can open this one in colab or if you prefer run it locally it is completely up to you we of course will need the OpenAI api key unless you're using a another provider although with another provider i will note that these pre-built tools will not work so yeah you have to be using OpenAI models to use these so there are a few of these pre-built tools from agents sdk those include the web search tool the file search tool and computer use tool among others and we're just going to take a quick look at the web search tool which we, we briefly use in the previous example so when we're passing tools to our agent we define an agent object we pass the name instructions as we would usually do we also pass a model as we would usually do but then we also provide tools okay and this is just a list of these well they're, they're function tool objects and, and We'll, we'll see that in a moment right now it's just a pre-built web search tool another thing to note here is that the nano model is not recommended for tools so you should use at least mini ideally now we can see which tools an agent object has access to by just looking at the tools attribute and we'll see a list in this case it's just a web search tool that we just defined and as we usually would do we use the runner object to run our agent and get some results from there so you can see the final output there so that is today and this all seems relatively recent now although the pre-built tools are you know they're really nice they're, it's nice to have those in most cases i think the majority of tools we would be using are either defined through mcp or they are custom tools, custom tools that we are building and we are defining within the framework. Now, the way that we do that is we use this function tool object. Now, the function tool, so it's a decorator, we're using it here. Function tool used in this way converts our tool here, which is just fetching the time and it's just returning the time for us. So we might use this in the scenario that we need to be able to tell our LM or the LM needs to be able to check the time maybe the user says a you know what time is it right now or how many days is it until christmas right the in in this case the lm might go and use a fetch time tool in you may also just insert time directly into your system prompt if this is something where you're expecting your agent to be like time aware like a lot of the time or you can just give it a tool to use it's, it depends so in this case we're just going to define a function tool for our model to fetch the time now one thing if we don't set the name over right here this is optional right so we, we can just do you know without that we could just do function tool but in this case the function tool name as provided to our lm will be fetch time alternatively if you want to give it an actual name or a, a, a different name to what you what the function is called you can do that so you would just use this name override parameter i believe also that the name here cannot be it needs to follow like a lowercase with underscores format so let's just try that because i don't quite remember okay you can see if we do that if we don't format that name correctly we're going to get this so invalid tools name string does not match pattern okay uh, and it tells you here this is the pattern we're allowed so we're allowed to have hyphens we're allowed we are actually allowed uppercase so we're allowed uppercase lowercase and numbers 
or all underscores, okay? So that's good to know. So we could, if we wanted to, we could just do something like this. That should work. But I'll revert it to what we had before. Okay. Now we can just confirm that this is a function tool object. Let me see. Yes, our fetch time function is in fact a function tool object. That's great. That means <laughs> that means our decorator worked as expected. And because it's a function tool object, that means we can we have these specific attributes that we can pull out. So we can get the name, which you'll see a moment ago, I, I, I modified this. Let's run this again. And we'll see that it's now our underscore name there or our valid name. We can see the description. Hey, that's weird. Where did we, where did we set that? So let's come back up a little bit and we can see that the description is being pulled from the doc string. So this doc string here is actually pretty important. It is in here that you described your LLM how and when it should use a particular tool okay so it's important that you that you use this and make sure that you describe right in in this scenario this is a very simple scenario so it doesn't you know we just write something simple but for example web search in your doc string here you should be telling your llm look this is a web search tool you should use or you should provide as much useful context as possible in your search query this is in natural language if it's a depending on what web search engine you're using right so you can give the airline instructions on how to best use your tool within the stock string that that is an important thing you, you should always do that then we can also check the parameters so parameters here we can see okay this function terrible example it doesn't have any parameters so we're going to see okay there's no required parameters there's just nothing in here so uh, that's fine we're, we're going to see later a tool with <laughs> parameters okay so we have our output class here we don't necessarily need to use this but th this is this allows us to do structured output i'm going to run without this first and i'm going to switch to using it so do this and let's just run this and see see what we get okay so something happened let's take a look okay so we got this the current time is this now the what i want to show you with that output class is that you can also structure your output so in this this is a you know we're adding a lot of complexity to a very simple use case here but it's just good for demoing all of this we want our response okay as we just got that's just our response here but i also want the lm to tell me why did it do what it did okay so the lm is just going to say okay i use the fetch current time tool because the user asked about the current time so i needed to do that right so we should see something like that so yeah we define that both of these outputs are strings you may also i don't know let's say uh, we want like a confidence score for example that could be a float uh yeah you can see thank you copilot for writing that for me you can see the confidence here we have our float this is a confidence level in its response from zero to one so that can actually be a pretty useful thing to to include as well in general so yeah this is structured output that we are providing and we provide that via the output type parameter as before we're going to use that runner object and then let's see what final output is because now we have multiple outputs so it's going to be a bit different okay we can see output class the response here and we can see the approach taken i fetch the current time using systems time query function to provide you with the exact and up to date time okay that's great and then we see that is the output class that we defined that, that object so we can also go in there if we want to access each one of those specific values we can go in like that okay so we come to here no i already printed it here never mind we can print it again okay and we can also use the function tool object here as well so you know we can do that with pydantic for example this can be useful if you are wanting to define a particular structure for the for the input so you can see here in this example we have these function args we're going to be using these function args 
in a tool which is just going to multiply two numbers together again super simple example but nonetheless really simple example we have the description for that so this is the you know where we had the doctoring before but then we also have this params json schema right params json schema is consuming what we have up here and using that to describe to our LM what the input parameters are. And this is really useful because by default, we can't do that. So if we, we just define a function and we decorate it with function tool, we can't specify in that function descriptions for each and every parameter, right? So if you have a, a set of parameters you need to describe, this is really useful for those more complex use cases. You can describe everything in much more detail using this approach, which is, is pretty good. And you can also validate things as they're coming in as well. So that's great. We we do still need to, of course, define our function that is gonna be used. So we have this multiply numbers function here, and we would just pass that down here to the on invoke tool. Okay, so we have that. Now we can come down and just see, as we did before, we can see everything that we have defined so we get a name and description as before okay we define these a different way before but the outcome is the same okay so this is the within that function tool object these are those attributes and then we also have this params json schema this one is a little bit different because now we have parameters okay so within the properties dictionary here before this was empty because we had no parameters now there are parameters we have x and y and also within those parameters we have descriptions okay so this is all getting sent to the lm the lm now knows exactly what each one of these parameters is for of course in this example this is a very basic example it's not really needed but for more complicated tools this is this can be very helpful we also have this required parameter down here now this is saying okay x and y are both required parameters for this function so the lm knows it must generate both of these to use the tool correctly what may happen right you you might have optional parameters so let's just set one of these to optional very quickly let's say you know we don't need x for whatever reason so we'll run this we'll come down to here and we'll now see if we make this scrollable we see it required is now just y we don't need x it's an optional parameter but x is still provided within our schema here so it's still described the llm still knows it can use x if it needs to but it's an optional parameter so it doesn't have to which can be really useful well you, you kind of need that in in many tools so we have that um we of course in this scenario we are definitely going to keep x as a required parameter so I'll rerun those so let's just go down here and run our new query so we're saying we want to multiply 3.41 by 7.2 let's see what we get here uh, we can well we we're going to get an object out of this so i'll just show you that very quickly so final output that's because we we set our output class again down here and we can see response and approach taken and we'll just print both of those out a little more nicely here okay so that's pretty cool now the very last thing we'll, we'll take a quick look at here we will cover this in a little more a little more detail later we want to look at agents as tools so in agents sdk we can use handoffs and agents as tools as ways to handle multi-agent systems now agents as tools is what it sounds like you define an agent and then you actually just provide that agent as a tool for another agent so in this example kind of a again silly example because you would just use the tools directly but nonetheless in this example we're going to have our multiply agent which has access to the multiply tool and then we also have a time agent which has access to the fetch time tool in reality it's you would probably use both of these as more like okay this is my social media agent it is the agent that is going to read all of my social media things and generate posts for me or, or make posts for me and then maybe we have like a writer agent which has been prompted with all this you know writing goodness and maybe can reference you know our past materials to generate 
a article or a social media post or whatever right and those two agents would work in tandem to you know like read okay what what should we talk about i'm gonna and then generate a post and you know post it out and you know just generate loads of ai slop for everyone to scroll past as they're on their on x or linkedin or whatever else right so you know you might want to use it or not for for that this example is a little silly in that yeah we would just use like you probably won't even use these as tools a lot of the time uh, but nonetheless this is how it works so coming down here we've created our two tool agents or sub agents however you want to call them and then we're also going to create this orchestrator agent this is the kind of like the controlling agent so when you're using agents as tools you do need like a, a top level agent and we actually don't need to provide this information here. We can remove that. So it's just saying, okay, you're an orchestrate agent. You're going to you know, do some stuff. And then we have these two tools, which are agents, right? So we just write the multiply agent or the agent name as a tool. Then we provide the tool name. So, as you know, how do we call this and the description for it as well? Let's go ahead and let's, let's put all this together. Let's run and we'll say, what time is it? Now, when we're using agents as tools, just remember that, okay, we have our orchestrate agent. That is going to say, I want to use the time agent. Time agent checks time, writes a response, takes it to the orchestrate agent. Then the orchestrate agent is going to write, is going to read that response and then write the response to you. So it's a token heavy approach. Just bear that in mind. The The handoffs are a bit lighter and, and, and better for that. And we'll, we'll look at those pretty soon. So let's see what we got. And yes, you can you can see. Okay, cool. So we can take a quick look at our traces to see what that looked like. So the, the multi-agent thing, you can see that two tools were used here. So we'll go into there. There was two tools were actually the orchestrate agent calling the fetch current time agent, and then the fetch current time agent calling the fetch current time tool. Okay. Again, I just want to emphasize that this is not the way that you should use sub agents like or agents as tools in agents sdk this is a very very silly example this is just to show you how it works we'll see pretty soon more realistic examples but for now that is actually it so we've covered tools and you know how we how we use tools how we define tool both built in and the custom tools and then we've also seen how we can use agents as tools. So that's it for this chapter. I will see you in the next one. Thanks.